Good morning. It is 9.48 and I am heading out of Biloxi. And I am on my way to my next adventure. Well, it's a day trip or the plan is for it to be a day trip. So I'm leaving Biloxi. I'm going to take the scenic route all the way down Highway 90 and then I'm heading to New Orleans. So I want to, of course, stop to get some beignets, to get some photographs, sightseeing, and hopefully I'll be able to meet up with one of my friends. I haven't seen her since I graduated from, no, no, I saw her after I graduated from college, but I haven't seen her in years. So I had graduated college. She hadn't graduated yet, but then she graduated, she got a job, and she moved to New Orleans. So I told her that I'd be in the area, and uh, I'm just like looking at this view anyway uh, of the beach. So anyway, I'm heading there and we're gonna take the scenic route. There is a place that I want to try to stop by, it's a church. The church has a beautiful story. Um, and so once I arrive there, I will let you know a little bit more about the church. I just made it um i told the lady i would be here at 11 20 it's 11 maybe 11 05 11 06 so i have a few minutes um this i really like these beach these towns by the beach like they're really cute these little community i'm not gonna call them little but these communities they're really just unique and personal i really like this school i like that it says the holy spirit center and then over here is a, I don't know if you can see, like an old cemetery. So the church I'm going to is actually uh, over here. I'm going to get out in a second and walk over there just to get a picture of the front of it. And um, then I want to like give you some history. So well, I, I guess I could do that now. So from what I read online, this church, I think they help black people. It had to do something. Let me, hold on. Let me research it again. Okay, I'm back. So, um, I thought this church had previously served as a school for um, African-American students back in the early 1800s. 18, it said 1868, so or 1800s, early 1900s. I thought the school and the church related, but then I re-researched and I realized that they said that they're actually irrelated. But this church is um, unique to this parish. And I didn't even know there were parishes in Mississippi. Fun fact, Mississippi was actually also under the French territory. So not just Louisiana, but Mississippi as well. So in this area, um, in this church, they actually, I hear they have a really great African-American choir. And the paintings in here are, is a, a black Christ. So I called the lady and she said she'd open the door to let me into the church. I should, um, anyway, I'm just looking forward to like going inside and sitting there and getting, you know, showing you guys what the inside of this church looks like. So I didn't record the conversation because I didn't ask her for her approval, but I just met the great, great granddaughter of the pastor, the man who built this church that was for African-Americans back, back in the 1800s. So what she told me was um, 
the original, like the church used to be close to the beach, but then um, because of the storm, it got destroyed. And so he built this church. And so this area is actually Third Ward Parish. This is a parish. It's once, we're not even in Louisiana, we're in Mississippi. So this is a parish, this is Third Ward, originally an African-American community, but recently has been dealing with what many cities, many um, urban cities around, many, let me not say urban, but many African-American communities around America have been dealing with, which is gentrification. So um, now it's mixed. So this church has an amazing choir, um, originally an African-American choir. She told me that they have sung with, they have sung backstage for Patti LaBelle um, and some other famous people. Um, she said now the church is diverse, so it's not just black, but they have people from many nations and tongues that come here to worship and to praise to God, which I think is very beautiful because that's what God's word says, is that every nation and tongue will praise his name. So um, anyway, just the story of the, ch of the church, of this neighborhood, of this parish, is very rich, it's very beautiful, and I hope one day it can be told in a film, that it can be told in news articles and magazines because, um, you know, people need to know about this place. It's a beautiful place. They have a beautiful mural. Um, I'm not able to show it to you because it is copyrighted, but, I, but you can go online, and I'll put the link of the church in the bio. You can go online and see the photograph of the mural that they have. It's, um, it's really nice. And this church, we were, I was telling her, I noticed that a lot of structures that were built by African, by slaves back then, or black people back in the 1800s, they survived so many storms and wars. So this church was built in the 1800s and it survived Hurricane Katrina. Um, also, she told me they're gentrifying this area because during Hurricane Katrina, this was the only area that did not flood. All the other areas flooded and this area did not flood. And this is the area where the, the African, the black people lived. So um, anyway, this is an establishment that was not destroyed. In Jackson, Mississippi, City Hall was built by African slaves and it survived the Civil War, another structure um, that survived. So it just, it to me, it speaks a lot of volume of quality, the, the, the soul that went into building establishments back then compared to now, they build stuff and the wind blows and it disappears. So I highly recommend that you visit this location, learn more about the history of this place. Um, anyway, I can't get a photograph. I thought I'd be able to get a picture and post it on my Instagram, but I will not be able to. I will just have to sit here and take it in and appreciate, appreciate this moment. Um, the lady also told me that this was the school in the community that was for, specifically, it was for the African Americans. But it's actually closed now, but they rent out the building and it's now a head start. Over there, the Holy Spirit Center, she said they'd have nuns that would come help the, that would come help the black kids. Um, she said the nuns had actually left right before um, 2005, before Hurricane Katrina. Oh, look at these prices. But you know, I think this is because this is premium. I'm not about to pay four hours forty five dollars. No.
Thank you. So I didn't have any cash on me and I was in the cash only line and the man who was in front of me, I have no idea who he was, but he just gave me $5. He was like, here. So I got the beignets and they were paid for by a stranger. So I got the beignets. Hold on, let me try to clean my camera. I, I got the beignets. I'm on my way to meet my friend. We're gonna have brunch, lunch at some place called Flamingos or something. Um, I wanted to take a carriage, but it's okay. Another time. <laughs> to meet my friend Esther for a late lunch I'm telling you what is that French quarters French square whatever you call it thing it's you're gonna meet some characters on there be careful this is good I should have got another one I was looking that way look at you she's adult no longer a college student. Ah! And at least. Last time was the photo shoot with the orange dress. That was before I graduated. Before you graduated, yeah. So I haven't That's seen you. Long yeah. That's like five. I don't feel yes. like it because we talk on the phone, so I, I know, feel like, like <laughs> it's been long. Like the last time was when um yeah, I'm gonna use the GPS. How was your food? My food was good. You gotta introduce yourself. <laughs> Yoli and I have been friends for <laughs> how long? How long like, have you been friends? Like I met seven you, years? Yeah, I met, I don't remember how, did, I didn't meet you through ASA. You met me through the show. Mutual friend. No, I met you before the, the show. I met you before the oh, fashion dude. show. Wanji, Wanji. Oh. Getting ready to go to this um, art gallery. It's all black. Um, a friend of mine, or this guy, he rec in Mississippi, he recommended when I came to New Orleans to visit this art gallery. It's called Studio B. So that will be my last destination. It, I did want to go to the Congo Square to see the Armstrong thing, but it's rain. It's kind of wet now, so I think the Studio B is going to be my last thing. I'm getting tired, and then I'm going to head to Houston. So let's check out this next destination that i have for us in new orleans <laughs> also yeah i think french quarter is it's very touristy i'm kind of over that it was fun you know a few years ago but now i kind of prefer the stuff outside of that anyway let's head out <laughs>
finished the art gallery. You saw it, Studio B. I'm heading to H-Town, and I will end this vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed the little pieces of New Orleans that you saw. Maybe next time I can come back and explore a little bit more. But anyway, goodbye. I'm tired. I got a five-hour drive ahead of me. I will see you guys later. Bye.